During Gautama Buddha's time, there was a famous and beautiful woman named Amarpali. She was so attractive that golden chariots were always waiting at her palace gate. Even powerful kings had to wait to see her. Although she worked as a prostitute, she had acquired immense wealth and could buy kingdoms. However, deep inside she suffered. Within her beautiful body resided a beautiful soul that yearned for love. People called her Nagar Vadhu, which means the wife of the entire town. One day, while standing on her terrace, she noticed a young Buddhist monk who possessed nothing but a begging bowl. Nevertheless, he had a remarkable presence, awareness, and grace. Instantly captivated by his charm, Amarpali rushed down to him and offered him food at her home. The monk accepted her invitation. After serving him food, Amarpali said, In three days the rainy season will start, and I invite you to stay in my house for four months. Buddhist monks refrain from traveling during the rainy season, spending four months in one location. For the remaining eight months, they continue their journey, usually staying no longer than three days in one place. The young monk replied, I will consult my master. If he allows me, I will come. With those words, he departed. Before the young monk could reach the assembly, his fellow monks who witnessed the encounter hurried to inform Buddha. They exclaimed, The young monk must be stopped. Amarpali has invited him to live in her house for four months. It is not appropriate for a monk to reside in a prostitute's house. Buddha advised them, Remain silent. Let him come. When the young monk arrived, he touched Buddha's feet and recounted the entire story. He explained, a woman has invited me to stay in her house for the four months of the rainy season. Every monk will be staying somewhere in somebody's house for four months. I too need a place to stay for four months. Therefore, I seek your permission to go there and reside. I will go only if you permit. Buddha looked into his eyes and said, You may stay. This decision shocked all the other monks. The thousands of monks present couldn't believe that Buddha had allowed a monk to stay in a prostitute's house. All the monks stood up and protested, This is not right. He concealed the truth. He said woman, but in reality, it is Amarpali, who is not just any woman but a prostitute. Gautama Buddha responded, I know, and because he did not use the word prostitute, I am permitting him to stay there. He respects her. After three days, the young monk left to reside with Amarpali, and the other monks resumed gossiping. Buddha advised them, You should remain silent. Four months will pass, and I trust my monk. I have looked into his eyes, and I saw no desire. If a monk's meditation is deep, he will transform the prostitute. And if his meditation is not deep, the prostitute may influence him. It is now a question of meditation versus physical attraction. Just wait for four months. Despite this, the disciples thought that Buddha was overly trusting. They believed that this young man was taking an unnecessary risk, considering Amarpali's beauty. Anyway, the four months elapsed, and the young monk returned, touching Buddha's feet. Following him was Amarpali, who also touched Buddha's feet. She expressed, I tried my best to seduce this young monk, but all my efforts were futile. Instead, he convinced me through awareness that the true essence of life lies in knowing oneself. Now I want to donate all my possessions to your community of monks. It is said that Amarpali later became one of the enlightened women monks among Buddha's disciples. If we examine our lives, we will realize that to control the sexual thoughts that arise in our minds, we must first eliminate sexual desire. However, instead of eliminating this desire, we often satisfy it by indulging in sexual activities because we lack control over our minds. That is why many young people engage in unnatural sexual practices like masturbation. They forget that our semen is our energy. By conserving this energy, we can achieve great success in any area of life. Throughout history, all the great personalities who have achieved greatness have done so by conserving this sexual energy. To conserve your semen, you don't need to suppress your sexual desire. Rather, eliminate it through meditation and positive thoughts. If your meditation is strong and you have control over your mind, you can easily manage the sexual thoughts that arise. This is the short story of Lion Karma Motivation. Thanks for watching and stay blessed.